Dominique Dawes vaults her way to an early lead. Her 1996 Olympic teammate, Amy Chow, stayed near the top with the highest score on bars. In a close competition, Olympic all-around champion Lilia Potkapayeva found one small mistake can have a big cost. Staying in contention, the youngest competitor, 15-year-old Dominique Mochianu, looking again like a seasoned pro. Throughout the day, Shannon Miller would battle for the lead, turning in one spectacular performance after another. But when the first day of competition was over, it was Dawes holding first place with a near-perfect floor routine. In the men's competition, John Roethlisberger soared, but found himself in a shootout with Blaine Wilson. A perfect 10 on the rings made Wilson the man to beat in Portland. Today, the CBS Sports Show comes to you from Portland, Maine, a city whose history is bound to the sea. We're at the Cumberland County Civic Center, where some of the world's top gymnasts have gathered to make their own personal history. This is day two of the World Professional Gymnastics Championship. Hello, everyone. Happy Mother's Day. I'm Andrea Joyce. Well, nine months have passed since the Olympic Games in Atlanta. And during that time, many of America's gymnasts toured the country, sharing their Olympic glory. But now it's time to get back to business, the business of competing. And today we conclude this two-day professional competition. Yesterday was a great day of gymnastics, highlighted by Blaine Wilson's perfect still rings routine. Will we see more tens today? We're happy to have former rhythmic gymnastics champion Wendy Hilliard on hand to help us out with the women's competition. And welcome back, 1984 double Olympic gold medalist Peter Vidmar. Peter, Blaine Wilson had such a spectacular day yesterday. How does he carry that momentum over to today? Well, certainly scoring his very first perfect 10 in competition was a big thrill for Blaine Wilson. Along with his recent NCAA and American Cup titles, he's quickly establishing himself as the man to beat in USA Gymnastics. But he can't really hit that cruise control button just yet because putting the pressure on right behind him is four-time national all-around champion John Roethlisberger. He was America's top performer at the Atlanta Olympic Games, only a tenth of a point behind Blaine right now, and his consistency always puts the pressure on his opponents. Roethlisberger did indeed look strong, and Wendy, as far as the women are concerned, it's a very close competition, particularly between Dominique Dawes and Shannon Miller. Well, these two champions have proved that their competitive drive is as strong as ever. For today's competition, Shannon Miller, the Olympic gold medalist in the balance beam, has the advantage in that event. And Dominique Dawes, always a standout in the floor exercise, won the Olympic bronze medal last year. So, with only 25 thousandths of a point separating the leaders, the overall winner of this event is going to have to be exceptional and consistent in both events. In their quest for the all-around title, here are the standings. Less than three-tenths of a point separate the top six gymnasts, Dawes, Miller, and Chow, with the top three spots. Let's head over to Michelle Tafoya now, standing by with Dominique Dawes. Well, 995s on both the vault and floor exercise yesterday put Dominique Dawes in the lead, and your coach tells me that during your floor exercise you made some split-second decisions. What went on there? Um, I was just doing my floor routine, just going out to do the best job that I could and just show the crowd that I was having fun doing it. Any, any changes at all that happened at the last second on your second tumbling pass? Not really, just my punch felt good, so I thought it would be good to add my punch run after the double fall. Today, it is beam and performance exercise, and you chose the music Respect for that. How much different is, is today's floor routine going to be from yesterday's? Um, actually, it's just a different music, and the tumbling may be lighter because of um, the difficulty level. We don't, I don't think there is a difficulty level needed on floor, so it depends on how I feel. Go out there and enjoy yourself. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks a lot. And once again, this event being competed under modified NCAA rules. Today for the women, the balance beam and the floor performance routine. Yesterday they competed on vault, bars and floor. Here's the competition order on the beam. Svetlana Boganskaya will kick things off. Score of 29.7. 
Bovinskaya, a true gymnastics veteran, 24 years old. In her spectacular career, she has won 12 Olympic and World Championship medals, including a gold medal in this event at the 1991 Worlds. She is such a consistent gymnast. Starting here with the punch front. The one thing that she does on beam is she has her elegant movements. Very sharp and clear. So series, back handspring, one layout. And a leap combination. One thing Bogey does have is she has her own style, her own way of moving. Very nice punch front. Nice original kick there. Beautiful balance into a back, down to the beam and a little lower beam movement. Logan Skyer retired after the 1992 Olympics, took a couple of years off, and then launched a comeback in 1995, moved to Houston, and since then has been coached by Bella Caroli. And she's setting for a dismount, just really concentrating, getting all the steps right. Double back. Now here's her mount. She's got to be square with the beam. She's going to do a front somersault. Land it square on. Really difficult move right into a wolf jump. So it's a combination mount. And here we have her dismount, round off. Tuck double, looking for the floor. One little step, but a very complete routine. And Boganskaya scores a 9.925. First up on the beam, not a bad score at all. Up next, 19-year-old Amanda Borden, captain of last year's Olympic gold medal team. I spoke with her coach, Mary Lee Tracy, before the event. She said she's not sure exactly all the moves Amanda's going to do today. But in her warm-up, she looked quite consistent. This her acro series, back handspring, back handspring, and the layout. Very good. Amanda told us she has had a blast touring with the other Olympians the last several months. Training schedule has changed dramatically. No more eight-hour days in the gym. They spend so much time on the bus traveling from city to city. They said it was kind of like a traveling slumber party. But it's all worked out. The one thing about not training so much and performing so much is that you have a level of consistency when you perform that much. And I think uh, that's showing in their work today. Very nice arch jump. Difficult move, actually. You think about an athlete training and competing in front of a crowd maybe only once a month or so, and now they're doing it every night for, uh, for many, many days. They really get to be comfortable in front of a crowd. It helps them in competition, too. Now she's getting ready to set up for her dismount. Nice little pose, get all her composure together. She's going for a double back. Very nice landing. Nicely done. She won the gold at the Pan Am Games on the balance beam in 1995. Six years on the national team, a very popular gymnast. And here she's going for a front tuck. Just a punch right to the edge of the beam, but very solid. And here she's going for the last move of the routine. Round off, double back, pulls it around. And just one little hop, but it's a very good landing. 
And the judges award Amanda Borden a 9.90. Still to come on beam, two other members of the Magnificent Seven from Atlanta, two-time world champion Shannon Miller and America's sweetheart from the 96 games, Dominique Mochianu. The World Professional Gymnastics Championship is sponsored by Brute. Put it on and you're ready to play. Brute, it's all part of the game. Your Touch and Johnson & Johnson, all the caring in the world. And by Scott's Lawn Products, for a great lawn, guaranteed. Hi, Mom. I wish I could be there today, but since I can't, I want to tell you Happy Mother's Day, and I love you. Up now on beam, Shannon Miller. She won the gold medal in this event in Atlanta. Also won the silver on beam at the 1992 Olympics in Barcelona. Shannon's always been such a consistent athlete. Never seen anyone work so hard and maintain such a high level of competition over so many years. And Shannon showed that consistency in day one of the competition yesterday. A 9-9 on vault, a 9-9-5 on bars, and a 9-9 on floor. And you can see this wonderful series that she has here on the beam, that she still has it all together. Very elegant movement there, just a little dance through. Gives a little bit more style to the routine. Here she's setting up for her aqua series. Back handspring, two layouts. Set. I think one of the signs of someone that's comfortable on the beam is the fact that they're not tenuous, and she's so deliberate in all of her movements. She just attacks every single skill. And she just did her Miller, and that's her <laughs> skill. And you know, that's the first time she's done it in competition since the Olympic Games. She's been plagued by a wrist injury the last couple of years, kind of on and off. Here she's setting up for her dismount. Round off, punch double, and she hits it. So confident. Really attacked that dismount, too. Here she's going for her series. And she's going to start off, she's going to go for a back handspring and then have two layouts. And as she just sets, see there, her shoulders are all square real good ending. And here's the Miller. Watch how she, you can see the kind of stress it would have on your wrist, but she just went through perfectly. She's an amazing gymnast. And the judges award Shannon Miller with a 9.95. Yeah. Here's Dominique Mochianu, 15 years old. In 1995, she won the silver on beam at the World Championships in Japan. She was the only American to earn an individual medal at that competition. She starts off with a really original mount. Turning on the beam, takes care of the requirement of being low to the beam, right from the top. Oh, tough combination is a half turn wolf jump. She's setting up for her series. <clears throat> Back handspring, two layouts also, very clean. Dominique is preparing herself for the U.S. National Championships to be held in Denver this August, followed by the World Championships in Lausanne, Switzerland in the fall. Pretty I mean, busy life for a 15-year-old. Very year busy, and now she's also having to prepare with the new rules, and so it's a lot of pressure on her to upgrade her routines. And so it's a clean routine so far, but just those little bobbles are going to cost some tents there. Full turn requirement. Here's a nice combination dance and acro. Got through that smoothly. Under the new code of points, there's an age limit of 16 years old. Had that been in effect for the 1996 Olympics, she would not have been able to compete. Tuck double dismount. Very nice descent. Nice landing. 
Although Dom, Dominique managed to stay on the beam, she had just a few little bobbles, which is going to cost her some points. Here she's doing, going for a wolf jump turn. You see she really had to check extra arm swing. And here she has a, a round off into a layout, and she just, just had to check herself just a little bit to stay up on the beam. So as soon as she cleans those up, she'll be getting higher and higher scores. And the score is in for Mochianu. It's a 9.825. And under the new code of points, that score actually would have been lower. This event, though, is not being competed under the new rules. Well, you can see the women's base score is going to go from starting at a 9-4 to a 9-0. So you have to see that the scores are going to be much lower with the new rules. And the men's base scores will go down all the way to an 8.6. So you may see world champions scoring 9.4s this year. And here's Elena Piscun from Belarus. And you know, when you talk about lowering the scores, it's really just allowing the gymnasts to adjust because in the next four years, they are definitely going to challenge those uh, difficulties and the scores will be much higher by the next Olympics. And there's a really nice series, a back handspring with a full turn. And I tell you, it's much more difficult to turn and twist on the balance beam for all these athletes. A required turn there. Now remember the beam is 16 feet long and only four inches wide. So think of that while she's doing all of these elements. Now wa watch this element, back handspring, full twist. Wow. <laughs> so tough. <laughs> so tough. It's interesting to note that back in 72, people wanted to ban Olga Corbett's standing back tuck. And you will never see that again in major competitions like this. You see a, a backflip with a full twist is amazing like that. The American women stole so much of the thunder at the Olympic Games in Atlanta. You didn't hear much about women like Elena Piscoon. She was 12th in the all-around, though. And just very consistent. She has so much power, but she's very clean in all of her exercises. Here she's setting up for a dismount. And you just got to concentrate it, get that timing just right. And a pike double. Very nice landing. Very nice. Here we see her mount. She's doing a front somersault, and she just has to check it just a little bit. Very small deduction, though. Here you see her dismount. She's doing a round off, and this time she pikes her double back, and she has a pretty good landing. The score. A lot of high scores on the beam for the women for Piscoon. It's a 9.90. Still to come on beam, we'll see if Dominique Dawes can hang on to her lead here at the World Professional Gymnastics Championship. Next week, you'll see many of these same women again as the sports show travels to Rochester, Minnesota for the Women's Professional Gymnastics Championship. Next on the beam, Lilia, Lilia Papkapayeva getting ready now to mount the beam from Donetsk, Ukraine. She's the all-around champion from the 1996 Olympics. And to tell you what kind of year she had last year, besides winning the Olympic all-around, she was also the world champion and the European champion. So she's trying to get back in the competition <laughs> now, and she's trying to get psyched for it. And she's got quite a bit of work ahead of her in terms of uh, meeting up with the new code of points. We talked about that new code earlier, and this is one who will really be affected by these new rules because she's preparing for her upcoming national championships. very consistent beam performer. She won the silver in this event in Atlanta and the silver at the World Championships in 1995. And so far, she's been very solid throughout this routine. As you can see, she has great ballet training, a wonderful toe point and good extension all over. Nice arm waves. And here she has a nice leap combination and very good extension and control. She's preparing for her dismount. Round off, tuck double. Very 
clean routine. This is uh, her mount, front tuck. Very nicely done. You can see she even lands in a turned out position. Another front on the beam. She checks just a bit, but it's very, very smooth. At the Olympic Village for the World Championships. The dismount, she's going for the round off. Tuck double back, looking for the, the floor. And just one little hop. Not much separating the women on the balance beam. Patkapayeva with a 9.90. Here's our leader in the competition, Dominique, Dominique Dawes. Dawes. 20 years old, looking very confident and fit here in Portland. A three-time national champion on the balance beam. She's also won silver medal on this event in the past, and so she's just an all-around performer, but her consistency on the beam is really what sets her apart. Dawes needs a good performance here to hang on to the lead, better than 9.925 to stay in first place. Just setting up for a series, back handspring, two layouts, very clean. In the past, she used to throw three at the end, but she doesn't need to for this competition. Well, that's smart gymnastics anyways, to stay in the lead, just be clean and fulfill the requirements. This is basically the routine she competed in the Olympics. Just a few minor changes, but that consistency really takes you far. And she has a punch front and a little, ah, oh, step. And unfortunately, there goes five tenths. So she just jumped right back up on there. That's going to be a, a big deduction, unfortunately. That'll cost her the lead. That may cost her the competition. It's almost insurmountable, which is one event to go. She just wants to keep going, keep her train of thought, keep concentrated to finish for the ending. Now, unlike the other gymnasts who did a round off into their dismount, she's doing two back handsprings into a tuck double. Somebody the 1996 World. Here's where Dominique had trouble. She's doing a front somersault. And as she's landing, her shoulders are just out of alignment, which causes her to fall. You can see four inches on the beam just doesn't leave you much room when you make a mistake. The dismount starts with two back handsprings right into a double back. And she just has to take one step because she was over rotated just a bit. So Dawes falters on the beam, scores a 9.40. Amy Chow trying to move up from third place. And after Dawes fell off the beam, she can move up. A perfect 10 on the beam would tie her with Shannon Miller for first place. Well, tens aren't easy at this competition, but so far she has a nice gymnastics combination there. As we know from past history, Amy can definitely come around and prove herself when she has to <laughs> on the balance That's beam, so sure. don't count her out. Even after a major crash, as she had at the Olympic trials, her tenacity put her right back up there to make that team. Very nice layout. In a recent magazine article, Amy was asked about how she keeps her composure on the beam. And she says that instead of blocking out any of her weaknesses, she kind of recites her problems to herself. It reminds her how to correct her problems. A nice little originality on the beam. Beautiful series. Look at the leg positions. Very solid. Well, she makes it look so easy. She's very confident, not stopping much. It's good to have a nice rhythm when you perform the beam routine. 
So she's setting up for her dismount. Round off. Wow. Very nice twist in the series for the ending. I must say, very solid routine. Yeah, she'll be a contender now for first place. That's Don't know right. if she'll get the 10, but she'll be up there. Exactly. Yes. Here's her first tumbling pass. She does a back handspring into a layout and then into a back handspring. A little originality for her series there. Now watch this as everyone else has been doing uh, tuck doubles or tuck pikes. She's just twisting it up, throwing a beautiful double twist and a nice landing. Very clean. Well, she didn't get the 10, but she came close. A 9.975 for Amy Chow. So with one rotation remaining for the women, here are the standings. Miller moves back to first place. Chow is in second, while Dawes drops down to sixth. Time now to check in with Michelle Tafoya. With Shannon Miller, who has regained the lead after her performance on the beam as the reigning Olympic gold medalist on this event, is there more pressure on you to live up to that rep reputation, or are you actually more relaxed out there? <laughs> I'm not sure it could go either way. Um, sometimes I feel like it's maybe a little more pressure, but I wouldn't change it for the world. <laughs> Amy Chow followed you up with a 9.975. She's <laughs> right on your heels. What do you need to do now on the performance exercise to ward her off? Uh, right now, I just got to hit my routine on floor. Um, it's a floor routine that I've done a couple times before, so I feel a little bit more comfortable with it, and it should be a lot of fun to watch. Good luck. Thank you. Coming up, we'll move to the men's competition as Cheney Humphrey tries to make his move on the leaders after this message and a word from your local station. Mom, I'm sorry I couldn't be home uh, for Mother's Day, but I just wanted to send a shout out to you. We've been through the ups, we've been through the downs, and you're very special to me. So um, happy Mother's Day. Have a great one. And a very happy Mother's Day to all of you out there. We're getting ready for the men's competition. Earlier, Michelle Tafoya spoke to the men's leader. Well, Blaine Wilson scored the only 10 of the competition yesterday. It was the first 10 ever in your career, and it came on still rings. And as we take a look at the uh, routine, talk about your performance and what stands out to you. Um, well, I was just thinking I needed a solid performance, um, and Pete told me that it, that it was pretty close. So uh, I just kind of jumped up, relaxed, um, you know, because this is my best event. This is what I like to do. Um, and, you know, I just tried to hold all my strength, or, you know, my strength parts, you know, for the full two seconds that you know, is a lot of that you're supposed to hold it. Um, and the, the whole thing that I needed to do was stick a dismount. And uh, that's what it came down to. And when I got off of rings, Pete said, that's a 10. I said, I don't think so. And it was. Yeah. Today, it is vault, parallel bars, and high bar. At the American Cup recently, you won uh, vault and high bar. How much confidence does that give you heading into those events today? Um, a lot of confidence. You know, I just have to go out there and, and be relaxed and do what I enjoy. You know, I enjoy performing and, and going out there and doing well. Enjoy it. Thank you. And as Michelle mentioned, here's the rotation order. Vault, parallel bars, and the horizontal bar. And the vault competition happened a little earlier, Peter. And John Roethlisberger did a nice, full-twisting Kazamatsu. Scored a 9.6, not a super high score, because that opened the door for Blaine Wilson to widen his lead with a 9.8 on this laid out Barani. And Roethlisberger's lower score allowed Dimitri Trush to move into second with this very high and far Kazamatsu. Great landing. Here's how things stand now for the men after the vault. Wilson still in the lead. Trush has moved up a spot. John Roethlisberger has dropped to third. This is how the men will line up on parallel bars. Cheney Humphrey will start things off. On the first day of competition, Cheney did well on the floor and the rings, but he fell off pommel horse, and that's the reason why he's currently in seventh place. And he had an OK score of a 9.55 on vault, so he's going to have to really move up here on parallel bars, but he's got some very explosive skills. Gets a good grip on the bars to begin his mount. It's called a peach basket, right to a handstand, to a front up rise, back toss. Very, very nice sequence. Very difficult to hold back in between the bars. Needs to hit his angles a little bit better on the handstands. Oh, little split of the legs there on the giant half turn.
Straddle cut to an L. Here's a press to a handstand. He's going to catch his breath a little bit. Get ready to finish the performance. There's a Stutz. Right to a double pike. Little hop in the landing. Nice set. That'll score very, very well. 26 years old and in 1993 was the national champion on this event. And here's this front uprise back toss. See his legs come apart just a bit. Lose about a tenth of a point there. In a parallel bar routine, the gymnast is required to press to a handstand. There it is. His dismount was a double pike. Double back flip, legs straight, pike position, little hop on the landing. Nice high dismount, though. And the judges give Cheney Humphrey a 9.65. Up next, next Kip up Simons, Kip silver Simons. medalist in this event at last year's national championship. Gymnasts have the option of either using a vaulting board to mount the parallel bars or just to start right from the ground. And that's what Kip's doing here. Peach basket to handstand, little step. Back toss, front uprise. This is called a Healy twirl. Twirling on one arm, nice hop throw it to the side. Oh, just got off there. Now he's, it was a smart move to not get a full five tenths of a point deduction by staying on the bars. Had he gotten off there, it would have been a bigger deduction. So nonetheless, it's still gonna cost him a bit. Double back dismount, kinda just to get off the bars there. Okay, a little tired at the end. Spent a little Simon. bit too much energy trying to get back on track after the slip. Retired elite gymnastics competition. Here's his Healy twirl, twirling on one arm, does a hop over the side. That threw him off right there as his hand slips off the bar, and he just holds on, trying to stay on. This now was a double tuck, stumbles forward, loses about two or three tenths right there. And the score for Kip Simons. And the score for Kip Simons, a 9.10. Kind of kicking himself for that one. Here's Blaine Wilson, still our leader after four rotations. The 1997 NCAA all-around champion in great shape, just coming off his collegiate season. And a big victory at the American Cup, the most prestigious event in the United States. He won by the largest margin ever. Really is coming into his own right now. And parallel bars, he's improved tremendously. He's got a great routine on this event. What's most impressive about Blaine is his explosive, quick power. Giant full pirouette right over the top on the end of the bars. Giant front uprise straddle. It's just a great routine. Very well composed as a giant. Back toss. Stutz to one bar. Another Stutz. High double tuck dismount. He's going to hold on to that lead quite easily. Very, very powerful performer. Nice giant swing. Back toss. Right to a stutz to one bar. Packed full of difficulty. Now his dismount, he really booms it. Does the whole double back above the bars. One, two, finishes it at the level of the bars. Leaves him lots of room to zero in on that landing. <laughs> well, his fellow gymnasts are chanting for a 10, but the judges give him a 9.8. That ring routine is for you, bud. <laughs> and we'll be back with more from the World Professional Gymnastics Championship in a moment. Peter Blas Puljic had some trouble on the parallel bars. On his stutz to one bar, he had to cover up a little bit to do a glide kip. Just couldn't get back up there and had to jump off the bars. That's at least a five-tenths of a point deduction. Only gave him a 9.25.
Up next, John McCready. And first up in the men's competition on He's a full-time student at the University John of Colorado. McCready. Still training on an Olympic level. Says a day doesn't go by when he doesn't think about the Olympics. Either Atlanta or the one to come, Sydney in the year 2000. And he's certainly one of the, the country's top hopes for men's gymnastics right now. He's got nice clean lines in everything that he does. Good straight body. There's a stitch to one bar. There's a front up rise. Full turn over on one bar. Kip back up to handstand. Another stitch. One more stitch. Setting up for a double pike dismount. Ooh, couple steps back, kind of cost him a bit. A double pike dismount's very difficult to land on parallel bars because they're rotating so fast. As you watch John come down, very fast rotation. Got to keep those hips up so he doesn't stumble backwards. That's exactly what happened with John. And the judges award John McCready a 9.60. 9.6. Dimitri Trush getting set for his bars routine. Trush currently in second place. And those arm pads are there for a reason. He does a peach basket right to a handstand. Watch this. He'll do a front uprise into a double pike front flip, catching the bars on his upper arms. Ah, oh, too bad. Separate his legs. It's going to be a big deduction for that counter swing. He's such a clean performer. I was really looking forward to a really high scoring routine here. There's a hot pirouette, get back up to handstand. Nice stutz. Such a nice style, good body line. Getting close to the end for his dismount. To a double pike, stumbles forward. Oh, too bad. Gonna lose quite a few tenths in that routine. He didn't quite get his hands back on the bar for the next skill. As a result, he just couldn't grab them. His leg just hit the bar on the way up. Here's his dismounts, a double pike. Legs straight, toes pointed, but didn't rotate enough. Had to take that step forward. And it's a 9.45 for Dimitri Trush. So Trush has opened the door for second place. When we come back, we'll see if John Roethlisberger can take advantage. Hi, Mom. Happy Mother's Day. Uh, the roses should be there, and the diamond tennis, diamond tennis bracelet is in the mail, so don't worry. I love you. Have a great Mother's Day. Join us next weekend for the Women's Professional Gymnastics Championship Saturday and Sunday at 2 o'clock Eastern Time. Back to the men's parallel bars now. Here's Mihai Baiju, currently in last place. Had a rough day yesterday on just about all of the events. See if he can pick it up here on parallel bars. Fly to reverse cut up to handstand. Mihai's always got good body line, good position. There's a nice stitz. It's called a mana. Right back up to handstand. Diamidov, once again, nice and straight. Other stitz. Needs to do some sort of an underbar combination here. Doesn't do it. Kind of a shorter routine. It was very clean, but he left out some critical elements. Let's see what he. See what the judges give him now. There's a nice Diamidov. Good toe point. Stutz. Double tuck. Little hop in the landing. And Mihai scores just a 9.20 on the parallel bars. Last up for the men now, John Roethlisberger. He needs better than a 9.475 to take second place. And he can do that. In fact, although he only had a 9.6 on vault today, John had 9.85s on all three of his events yesterday. He mounts on the side of the bar, on one bar. 
Little glide, shoot his legs through up to an L. And look at that, pressing to a handstand on one bar. Pass, swing to handstand. Reverse pirouette. There's a stutz. Nice back toss. Stutz to one bar, pirouette in. This time down to another glide kick. So far, John's right on. Dismount, unusual one. Front with a half into a backflip. Very difficult dismount. Not many people do that. Very impressive ending to that routine. Here's that stitch to one bar. Does a kip back up to the bar, and his dismount is very, very difficult. He does a front up rise to get all that momentum forward. Does a front flip with a half turn into a back flip. Little hop on the landing, but it's a very difficult dismount. Ugly, but effective. And Roethlisberger scores a 9.70, and that's good enough for second place. That concludes the competition in the end. We're one more to go, two, baby. One more. We're Come on. The in a few so with one event remaining for the men, Blaine Wilson remains on top. John Roethlisberger in second place, followed by Dimitri Trush. Still to come later in the show, the conclusion of the women's competition. Shannon Miller has a narrow lead over Amy Chow. But next, Peter Vidmar sits down with the legendary coach Bella Caroli after this message and a word from your local station. Championship. The men just completed their parallel bars rotation. Let's check in with Michelle Tafoya. With John Roethlisberger, a 9.70 on parallel bars, Blaine Wilson is not making this competition easy to get back into, is he? No, I wouldn't have to talk to him. You know, he should respect his elders a little bit more. It's, it's, I'm disappointed in him. No, he's an awesome gymnast, and I expected that. He's not going to budge. You know, you got to just go out there, and you got to just hit better stuff than he is, and I'm not doing that right now. Well, high bar is next. What can you do to try to make up some of the difference? Hey, anything can happen. We're flying over that bar. Anybody can miss it, so you got to be ready. you got to hit your stuff. And, you know, I need a little help from Blaine at this point, but uh, I'm going to go out there and do the best I can. Good luck. All right, thanks a lot. Well, a lot of people in the gymnastics community thought Bella Caroli was retired, but he's been here in Portland on the sidelines. Peter Vidmar had a chance to sit down and talk to him. Is Bella Caroli retired? Well, this retirement thing is bothers me many times because I don't feel like I'm still quite at the age then I would uh, say retired, retired. The big or word is, is bothering me a little bit. I did retire if they want to qualify that one from coaching high elite uh, national and international level gymnast. But I'm still active just like before, even maybe even more than ever before at the basic level, the grassroots level, and, and the level where I believe that gymnastics right now needs a little bit more support, and I personally believe those kids need to experience something, but they might lead up for a new way of gymnastics. Would you coach another great gymnast if you saw the talent? I would never say no, because I uh, did uh, retire uh, uh, my word in 92, and I made an announcement, and I turned it around, and in 94, at the time when my athletes been asking me to come back, I responded positively, so I did come back. So I would not say if uh, my former athletes would come out and say, hey, Bella, let's go because we really need you, then I would say no. No, that's, uh, that would be is always an option, and always would be something what I would be ready to do if, uh, if the need will be there. Tell us just a little bit about um, about uh, the moment with Kerry Strug in Atlanta and uh, in that final vault. Of course, you know, nobody, nobody ever wanted to see an injured gymnast uh, trying to perform on the injured uh, uh, situation. And I wasn't the one who I wished ever uh, to experience this one. But now I'm proud, and I'm proud beyond any kind of limit that thing happened. I'm proud because for the first time ever, we had an opportunity to show not just great athletic performance out of the floor, but the inside, the moral part of these young people. Kerry, 
brought not just the gold and secured the gold for the country, but Kerry brought the appreciation of the country up to the level like we, ne we never experienced before. They showed what the gym is supposed to be about, a strong, dedicated, and a person with great integrity and capable for sacrifices if the things comes and when the time is asking for. At what point did you say, I'm just going to pick her up and bring her out there myself? Uh, that was a, a very confused moment. Uh, she was on the stretcher, and she was carried out. And uh, of course, you know, carried out as normal out of the arena. But from the arena, they've been heading outside in the, in the area which she was heading toward the main door. And Kerry, bello, bello, bello. I said, what's going on? So said, bello, they're going to take me. Uh, where are you take? No, 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 nobody going to take you. Nobody going to take you. That was the moment when I went up to say, where do you want to take? Wait, wait, oh, we have to take, them, take her to the hospital. You know, it's, she's, she's injured. Oh, yes, so you're going to take her to the hospital, <laughs> definitely, but not now. After this ceremony, the golden ceremony is over. When the award ceremony is going to be there, she there belongs to that place. She has to enjoy that, that incredible moment, that unique moment of the life of an athlete to get the reward and to hang, to be hanged that the gold medal on her neck. So I picked her up and ran <laughs> after the team, and that's when uh, I brought her up uh, to the podium and experienced something um, deep, deep satisfaction, mm -hmm. giving her the chance to be with her teammate, and giving her the chance to really enjoy the moment, which she had a tremendous contribution to. Andrea, I also asked Bella about his gymnast, and it's interesting, he said that Nadia was the hardest working, but that Mary Lou Retton, with her drive and personality, was the most enjoyable to have in the gym. And still to come, the women's competition as Amy Chow tries to catch Shannon Miller. We'll be back with the men's high bar. Blaine Wilson has a commanding lead, but it's gymnastics. Anything can happen. of the World Professional Gymnastics Championship. Andrea Joyce alongside Peter Vidmar and Wendy Hilliard. Wendy, Dominique Dawes really took herself out of this competition with that fall on beam with just one rotation remaining for the women. What will it take for them to catch Shannon Miller, who's now our leader? Well, they're going to have to be consistent, of course. Uh, this floor exercise is going to be very special for the new music, the vocal music. But actually, Svetlana is on the heels behind Amy Chow, and she's a great floor performer. So it's just going to make sure that they stay in bounds, they hit all of their elements, and who has got the most personality. And Peter, what about Blaine? Wilson. He's looking a little unbeatable here. Yeah, his lead's just about insurmountable. It's going to take a big crash, I think, on High Bar for him to lose this event because he's so consistent right now. However, High Bar's the one event where there's that big if. Are they going to make their big release moves? It's the most exciting event in men's gymnastics. I'm really looking forward to it. And here are the standings now for the men. One more chance to catch Blaine Wilson, but as Peter mentioned, he has an almost insurmountable lead over John Roethlisberger and Dimitri Trouche. The order of competition for the men on the high bar now. Kip Simons will kick things off. Here's Simons. He was the first American to compete in Atlanta. He led off with a strong performance on the high bar. Always important to get the team off to a good start. That's why they chose Kip to go up first. Nice stalder, full pirouette. Getting ready for the required release move. There it is, call it to Katya. Reverse sect over the bar. Hop, stoop into his required dorsal grip. Little uh oh, little stalter half got stuck there. He doesn't have to do the dismount off to the other side of the bar here. Here he goes. Double layout. Oh, put his hands down, big deduction. Too bad. Kip Simon. Kip has announced his retirement says his body can't put up with all the physical the demands of the sport. Olympic Here's where he got in trouble. He had a stalder, half turn, was supposed to go over the top, didn't make it. So watch him change his hands, 
go back down the other side, and then get ready for that dismount. It's double layout, double back flip in the stretch position. Stumbles forward, puts his hands down. Too bad. The score for Kip Simon scores a 9.55. Here's Blaine Wilson, our leader in the competition. Blaine needs better than a 9.55 to clinch the championship. So what does he do, Peter? Does he play it safe here? Well, probably not. I mean, he's in good shape. He should do what he's trained to do, and that probably involves all of his big release moves. He knows how to do them. Been consistent all year. Full pirouette. In bar stalder. Full pirouette at the grosser grip. Here he goes. This is the key to his winning. Here's the reverse act. He catches it, no problem. Right to a giant. Full over the bar to a one-arm giant. Nice one-arm giant sequence. Setting up for the dismount. Double to see, double layout. He's won this competition. Ray Wilson, the current American champion. Blaine's release move is called a Dikachev, named after the Soviet gymnast that did it first. That's a reverse hect. His dismount is a double layout, but he does it with two twists. There's one, two, very quickly. Stumbles forward, but he knows it's enough to win. Still the most consistent male gymnast here, a 9.85 on the high bar for Blaine Wilson. And that will clinch the championship for Wilson. We'll be back with more from Portland, uh, Maine in a moment. World <laughs> Welcome back to Portland, Maine and the World Professional Gymnastics Championship. Peter Blas Poljic struggled a bit on high bar. Not a bad routine, but just a bit of a struggle on his dismount. Double layout, full out, and stumbled forward on that landing. Now here's John McCready. John McCready getting set for his final performance at last year's Winter Cup Challenge. John won the high bar competition. And the Winter Cup Challenge is the big re-ranking meet for men's gymnastics. All the top gymnasts go to compete there to get ranked for the rest of the year. It's a big meet in men's gymnastics. Nice release move. Ah, oh, too bad. Just did not quite bring that around. Now for a release move, the angle at which the gymnast lets go is critical to his catching the bar. Watch John as he comes around, the point at which he lets go of the bar. Gets a good tap, but he lets go right here, and the problem is his angle is right about here. Had he let go just a little bit sooner, at maybe this angle, he would have been able to catch the bar. So he lets go, he's just about an inch too far away from the bar. He could have been closer by releasing earlier. McCready getting ready to resume his routine now. Now he's going to try it again. There's the reverse set, catches it with, without any difficulty. Nice in bar stalder. In bar stalder half turn. Getting ready for his dismount. Little deduction there as well. Winding up, here he goes. Double layout, full out. Nice landing. Too bad. His dismount was a double layout with a full twist on the second flip. Gets a nice tap, opens up, very crisp. Good landing, but just can't make up those lost points from that release move. And the score for McCready, a 9.25. Here's Dimitri Trush, currently in third place, going into his final routine. And he's a good one on the high bar. There's a backup rise. Stalder. Getting ready for his release. It's a double back over the bar called a Kovacs. Caught it perfectly. In bar Stalder to a hop. Got great body line. 
real crisp toe point. Another release, doing it to Kachev. Getting ready now for his dismount, winding up. Giant, giant. Double layout, double twist, opens up early. That was a fantastic performance. Gonna score very high. Let's see if the judges give him a 10. Cruz, the Russian horizontal bar champion in 1994. He was forced to retire with a knee injury in 95, but after surgery made an inspirational comeback. His first release, he was called a Kovacs, double back over the bar, catching it blind, very difficult to catch. Dismount was a very crisp double to double back flip. Two flips, two twists, laid out, perfect landing. And the score. And how about this? A perfect score for Dimitri Trush. Still to come, the women on the floor after this message and a word from your local station. Join us next weekend for the Women's Professional Gymnastics Championship, Saturday and Sunday at 2 Eastern Time. Well, this last rotation, Peter, proved to be a difficult one for Mihai Baiju. Yeah, he had a problem on this Kovacs. Double back over the bar, just couldn't get around to catch it. Real rough day for Mihai on the high bar. And he scored just an 8.50 on that routine. Up Next now on the high bar, John, John Roethlisberger. John comes from a family of Olympians. His dad, Fred, was on the 1968 Olympic team. His sister, Marie, an alternate on the 84 team. This is a very consistent event for John. Nice full pirouette from his stalder. Here's a one-arm giant sequence right into a one-arm Takacha with his legs together. Couple stalders, full pirouette. Hot pirouette. Stalder, full turn. So far, he's right on track. Getting ready for a unique dismount over the bar. Double front half turn. <laughs> well, with that 10 from Truth, John needs better than a 9.775 to hang on to second. And I think this crowd thinks he got it. John's having a lot of fun with gymnastics. Love to get the crowd excited about it. His release move is a Tukacha <laughs> with his legs together from one arm. One arm giant, pulls his arm off the bar, gets his legs around the side, catches it perfectly right into a giant. Unique dismount. He does a front over the bar, kind of a double front with a half turn, opens up, perfect landing. <laughs> says, the crowd is chanting for the 10. And they got it. It's a 10. What a feeling to score his first perfect 10. That allows Roethlisberger to hang on to second place. Trush got the 10, and Roethlisberger answered with one of his own. Cheney Humphrey has the task now of following that. He'll wrap up the competition for the men, and the best he can finish up is fourth in this competition. Chaney does a lot of release moves in his high bar routine, many of them consecutive. He's done up to four in a row. Let's see what he does today.
Here he goes. Stalled her up, pirouette, getting ready right away for his release moves. There's a number of Tkachevs. Here's the first one with his legs together. Next one with his legs apart. Another with his legs together. Wow. Right into a ganger. Four in a row. All he's got to do now is just finish this routine. See what he does. Double layout. The men have ignited the crowd in their final rotation. That relief sequence is about as good as I've seen him do it. He does a catch up with his legs together, really high over the bar, catches it to one with his legs apart. Got enough swing to do it again with his legs together. That's very difficult at that point. Into a flyaway half turn. Finishes off with a dismount that's not quite as difficult as some of the other ones done today. Double layout. Doesn't matter though, the release moves are going to we're gonna give him that high score. Chaney Humphrey watches Roethlisberger's 10 and says, oh yeah. for Cheney Humphrey. The men finish out the competition in style. Blaine Wilson, the champion, followed by Roethlisberger, Trush, and Umphrey, the second, third, and fourth positions, all scoring tens in the final rotation. Let's head over to Michelle Tafoya now standing by with the champion. Well, just a consistent performance all weekend long. How much of an advantage do you think you had and that you've been competing so much lately? Um, well, I just came off my college season, so I, I think I was in good shape to come to this meet and um, to give it a good shot to win. And, you know, I did end up winning. It's, I mean, it feels great. It's awesome to be out there among the best. Congratulations. Coming up, the women on the floor. Can Shannon Miller hang on to her slim lead over Amy Chow? We'll be back. Mom, I wish I could be with you today, but I just wanted to let you know that I'm thinking of you, and I want to thank you for all that you've done for me, so I hope you have a great Mother's Day. I love you. Back in Portland, Maine, we're getting ready for the final rotation for the women. Here are the standings as we get set for the final floor exercise routines. Shannon Miller in first place, followed closely by Amy Chow and Svetlana Boganskaya. And the order for competition on the floor, it'll be Amanda Borden up first. Amanda had some trouble on the floor yesterday, one of the reasons why she's in eighth place. Amanda has quite the personality for full exercise. She's really good projecting to the crowd. She's gonna start off with a jamming tune, Broadway. You may notice already that uh, this floor exercise performance routine is different because they can use vocals. But you still got a tumble. Here's her first pass. Whip through to a double back. Very nice. Gregory Fuller choreographed this routine. And you're gonna have a little bit more fun because everyone's getting involved in the crowd. Here's her second pass. Back handspring, double back. Amanda's schedule has changed since the Olympics. She's not training as much, but she has done a lot of TV commercials, speeches, even some work for CBS Sports as a commentator on the cheerleading championships. 
can really tell that she just loves to perform. Very engaging with the crowd. Amanda Borden, six years on the national team, three world championship teams. Amanda is coached by Mary Lee Tracy. Since the Olympics has built a new gym, the Cincinnati Take a look at her first tumbling pass. Gaining speed, she has a round off into a whip back. Back hands bring it up for a double tuck. Pulls that around. Fairly good landing. And now for her final pass, not as difficult as her first. She's gonna take it front handspring, front layout, and that's it. Little step on that one. But she just wanted to have a little fun and show off that routine. And Amanda Borden sets a high standard for the women to follow, a 9.925. Here's Shannon Miller. An incredible career for this young woman. The most decorated American gymnast in history. She's won more Olympic and world championship medals than anyone. This car is automatic. It's systematic. But I think Shannon wants to say it's time to show that I can have some fun. Watch Beast Lightning. Jam into Grease Lightning. This routine was choreographed by Geza Pozar, who choreographs a lot of the American girls' routines. And here's her first pass. Full in. Wow. Oh, she's really going for it, though. usually such a classical gymnast and does very classical routines and music, so it's nice to see this side of her. Yeah, it's a nice departure for her. Kind of letting her hair down, literally and figuratively. But I'm bummed, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Here's her second pass, two whips, through to a nice layout, punch front, and then she's going the other way. Ah, a little Dominique Dawes action. Just a little bit. Speaking of Dominique Dawes, it's interesting that Shannon is performing to music from Greece when it's Dominique Dawes who's actually performing on Broadway in the musical Greece. Maybe she's doing a little auditioning of her own out there. Yeah, just a little bit. <laughs> It's nice to see Shannon having so much fun. You always thought she was such a shy gymnast all the time. But you know, she's still competing because she's leading right now, and she's a competitor. She doesn't want to give up that top spot. And she's setting up for her final pass. Crowds leading her on. Front foot. Wow. Seven time Shannon Miller. Shannon Miller. The only American in history to win two okay. world championship all around Three titles in a row. That's her coach, Steve Nuno. And she gets a standing ovation from the crowd here in Portland. Here's Shannon really showing her stuff in her tumbling exercise. She's doing whip backs too, to a layout, punch front, and then she keeps going. Back through a series of back handsprings and finishes off with the layout step out. The score for Shannon Miller, 10. The crowd loves it, and the judges love it. It's a 10 for Shannon Miller. And they're back on their feet in Portland. The first perfect score for the women, and that will clinch the title for Shannon Miller. And young Dominique Mochianu will have to follow Mochianu. that act. 
Dominique was fourth on the floor at the Olympics. Well, Dominique really knows how to get a crowd fired up herself, so I wouldn't be surprised if she really goes for it. Front throw to a twist down to another step out. It takes amazing combination work there. Another two and a half twist. Beautiful turn there. Now you can see Dominique is preparing for competition again, so she wants to make sure and add all of her elements that she's going to need. And this routine is also choreographed by Gaza Kozar. And the garrison into the wolf turning jump. Remember, you have to get qualifications, not just from the tumbling, but also from the dance moves. And here she's setting up for her next pass. Backhand bring into a double tuck. Dominique's parents, Camelia and Dimitri, were Romanian gymnasts. They always dreamed of their daughter being a gymnast. In fact, when she was just six months old, they looked for early signs of athletic ability. They hung a clothesline up in the kitchen, and they held her there until she grabbed on. She hung on for several minutes, and that was when they thought she might have some athletic ability. And they I were think right. they were right, yes. <laughs> Final pass, double twist. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Very nice routine. From Houston, Texas, Olympic gold medalist Dominique Bocciani, the coach, Mihai Bastian, the former coach. Her first pass was so unique and really smart choreography. She has a front handspring, one and a half twists, and then an immediate step to a back layout, and she doesn't stop there. She goes right again, and she's going for a round off, back handspring into a two and a half twist, and now she's finished. Just a little step. The and the score for Dominique Mojianu a 9.95. Still to come, Lilia Podkopayeva on the floor. Welcome back to the World Professional Gymnastics Championship. Let's check in now with Michelle Tafoya. Dominique Mociano had a 995 on the floor. You enjoy this event. The crowd definitely was into your routine. How much fun was it to perform? That was a lot of fun. Um, it was our last event, and I wanted to go out feeling good and that I accomplished what I wanted to. You had to follow up Shannon Miller's perfect 10 routine. Did that make it much more tough for you? It made me want to enjoy it more and have fun because she did a great job, and then I wanted to follow up and do it just as well. Great job. Now on the floor, Elena Here's Elena Piscoon from Bobrus, Belarus. so much for granted in this country. In Elena's hometown of Bobrusk, the gym is so small, it's not even big enough for a full-size floor exercise mat. So she can really only train properly on this event when she trains in mix. And that's really difficult, especially when you want to keep your endurance up if you're not able to do a full routine. It'd be like a figure skater skating on a smaller ice rink, practicing exactly. on a smaller rink. Here's your next pass. Two front bounders into a one and a half twist. Low on that series. Remember, as I said, they have to make sure and get difficulty from their dance movements also. The final pass, round off back handspring, and just a single twist, not too difficult. Elena Piscu. 
from Belarus, 20 years old, the coach Valerie Kolodinsky. There she's going, and you can really see how powerful she is. Back handspring, two and a half twist, punch front. That's such a difficult combination. And Piscoon scores a 9.875 on the floor. Lilia Potkapayeva up now. In addition to winning the gold in the all-around competition at the 1996 Olympics, she also won the gold medal on the floor exercise. Looks like Lilia's going to go country on us. You can see from the bandana around her neck. It's like Cotton Eye Joe. First tumbling pass. Two fronts to a double front. Oh, big step and way off the floor area. Unfortunately, it'll be a deduction there. Well, she still is one of the finest front tumblers there are. Male or female, really a great tumbler frontwards. And two layouts. And the thing is, to, to tumble front, it just takes more energy to gain your speed and to control the landings. That's why you get more difficulty. Listening to this music, you know that Lilia has been spending a lot of time with the American gymnast. She's been on that tour, traveling from city to city by bus. And she said that what she learned is that she's not that different from the American gymnasts. They're all pretty much alike, have a lot in common. Oh, that's true. And one thing they did learn while on tour is how to get a crowd going. <laughs> Even though Lily is having fun with this routine, she still shows her great technique. She's gained control of her feet, nice turnout, which makes the whole routine that much clearer, fun to watch. Concentrating for the last pass. Round off back handspring, tuck double, and she just rolls out of it. Huge deduction there. You may see that in this competition, they can have a landing mat. Oh, that's too bad. Lilia was in fifth place heading into this final rotation, and things just fell apart for her out there. And here we're talking about that spectacular front tumbling technique she has. There's a front handspring, bounder front, and then a tuck double. Really difficult stuff, and she just over-rotated way too much, had to step out. Here's her final tumbling pass. She does a round off back handspring, and then she's gonna go up for a tuck double, and she over-rotates again, majorly. Off the floor she goes. Tough break. And Potkapayeva with a 9.225. Here's Dominique Dawes. In addition to winning the team gold in Atlanta, Dominique won the bronze on the floor.
get a little pumped up. It really is much more fun. And she gets to show her a sassy side. She's just letting go and letting the crowd get into it. <laughs> Finishing with the pike double back. And now we might be seeing another really top score here. <laughs> well, the crowd jumped to their feet. A standing ovation for Dominique Dawes. Coached by Kelly Hill. Is coach Dominic for 16 years. Now here's an incredible tumbling pass series. Now she starts off two whip backs, backhand spring. She's doing a double twist. Right when she lands, she goes right to a punch front, and then she keeps tumbling. Backhand springs into just a little kind of tuck and another punch front, but she really doesn't even stop there. She does a little top to the floor and look at the competitors they're like she's not <laughs> stopping <laughs> and here it is Dominique Dawes a 10 Svetlana Boganskaya takes the floor. Um, I just want to wish you the happiest Mother's Day, and um, I want to say I love you and thank you for always being there for me. The crowd in Portland still buzzing after the fifth 10 in today's competition. Let's head over to Michelle Tafoya. Dominique Dawes scored a perfect 10 on the floor. You had nothing to lose when you went out there and you just went for broke. How surprised were you by the response and by the score? I wasn't really surprised because um, I'm pretty good at coming back when I'm down. It was just hard for me to stay up and that's what I definitely have to work on mentally of staying emotionally intact and always thinking positively and not making mistakes like I did on the balance beam, which is one of my favorite and best events. Well, congratulations on the 10. Thanks a lot. All right, thanks, Michelle. Two more women left to compete on the floor. Here's Amy Chow. She needs better than a 9.85 to clinch second. This crowd is so pumped up from all of these routines. So Amy's improved her tumbling. Wow, she's a hyper bullet pike position. The vocals really does make a big difference in the crowd appeal. They love it. Now, since Shannon Miller scored a 10 on her floor routine, Amy Chow coming into this was in second place. So she, even with a 10, would not be able to win the competition. Amy really has been trying to improve her presentation. Her tumbling, of course, is getting great. Look at that triple. You would never know it, but Amy really got involved in gymnastics kind of by default. Her mom tried to enroll her in ballet classes when she was three years old. Nobody would take her. They said she was too young. So she signed up for gymnastics with Mark Young, and she's been with him for 15 years. So she's going for her final pass. Just a double out of it, but, you know, fun routine for Amy Chow. <laughs> well, after all the pressure of all the years of competing in Olympic and World Championship events, national championships, these young women look like they're having a blast out here. Years old. It's really the best way to enjoy gymnastics, just to really let it out, have a good time, and have the crowd appreciate it. 
Well, I don't think the girls care now really about the all-around. They know it's locked up. And so uh, they just want to go out there and see you can do the best floor routine. Right. Just, just get the crowd excited. And she's really doing that, pulling everything through. She does her full in with a pike position. And here it the is, another 10. This Ten. one for Amy. The judge is getting into the spirit of the competition, <laughs> I think, also. Come on, set low, you can do it. A couple of tough and acts to follow. Last up for the women, Svetlana Boganskaya. 1988, she won four Olympic medals, including the silver on the floor. There's anyone that can close out a floor routine with a lot of dynamic movement and connection with the audience is this girl right here, Svetlana Boganskaya. It's her first pass, whip through a tough double back. Atlanta can really move and dance well, but she's also still tumbling quite well. She's doing a whip back, back handspring, and a tuck double. Good height on that, just lands it. And she's gonna finish again with a double back, but this one has even more height. Out of the back handspring, just floats this one up. Beautiful landing. Well, the women have really lit it up here in Portland for Boganskaya now on the floor. What's she going to get Another 10. Score for Svetlana Boganskaya. 10. The fourth woman in this rotation to get a perfect score. It was a spectacular rotation for the women. Shannon Miller wins the World Pro Gymnastics Championship. Michelle Tafoya is standing by with the champion.
Well, you simply went out and attacked your floor routine, but really it was your consistency all weekend and that beam performance that kept you in the top of things. Oh, it was a great competition. I had a lot of fun, and the crowd is amazing. How satisfying is it, Shannon, to be able to continue competing with some of the best gymnasts in the world in such a relaxed environment and win? <laughs> it's been terrific. Um, I really haven't competed on all four events since the Olympic Games, so it was great to get back out and do all four events and have a lot of fun doing it. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. A reminder, join us next weekend for the Women's Professional Gymnastics Championship. And golf is coming up next, the Bell South Classic from Duluth, Georgia. For Wendy Hilliard, Peter Vidmar, and Michelle Tafoya, I'm Andrea Joyce saying so long from Portland, Maine. And on this Mother's Day, we'll let Bella Caroli have the last word. And since it's Mother's Day today, I wish Happy Mother's Day for all the mothers in the world, but especially in my beautiful sport, in sportal gymnastics.